first we see the empty platform, the barge master, we did of course tests first without the crane on it, without a load on it. And here you can see the, the platform moving, yeah? And you cannot see that it's standing still because also the cameraman is moving. But here we placed the camera on the platform and you can see that the horizon is standing perfectly still. Yeah? Uh, well, this is of course a major achievement, uh, but what we did after that, I think that's really a step forward. Yeah? Where we have 700 tons on the platform and we achieved a compensation rate of over 95% for roll pitch and heat. After we did the test with the 700 tons, we of course put the strain on it and uh, that's the application that you see here in front of us. And what you see now, that's important, of course, that this hook is hanging perfectly still. Huh? That's the big difference, isn't it? And of course we had, I think we had a swell here of 1.2 meters significant. So now you know more about the problem and the solution. I hope you understand it. And you see the vessel motions, yeah? The vessel is always moving. And the green line, that's the residual motion of the barge master. And, uh, well, probably not everybody can read it, but it says there are 0.014 meters. Indeed, that's 14 millimeters. That's the residual motion of the barge master with the payload, I'm not sure, with 200 or 700 tons on it. So, indeed, the barge master is working very well. It's exceeding our expectations, I can tell you. Another question that people ask me very often is how did you start with the barge master? Um, now, very brief. Um, I was sitting in my office, it was 2008, and Ari van der Rijk, one of our most senior engineers, he was sitting opposite of me. And uh, I, was set, I said to him, well, Ari, this problem with the swinging load, um, why don't we solve that just with a motion compensation platform in between? Yeah, we take a standard barge and we take a standard frame, and in between, we place this motion compensation platform. Now, Ari, he's, he's a bright guy, he's a very creative guy, he's got lots of fantasies, not only, well, not only about technical things. <laughs> I can say that Ari is And he said, well, Martin, well, why don't you go to Rexcode? They are the number one in driving control systems. Yeah, they can help us properly, and uh, they know how to build this. So I picked up the phone, I called Vox Post Expert, got Will Bogart on the line, and he said, well, please come over to, uh, to Boxel, I think this is a nice idea, um, and uh, let's sit together and see how we can help you. Next week we were in the office in, uh, in Boxel, and we sat together there with Martin Kuipers, and with uh, Lynn Bogart, and I saw the twinkling in Mar Martin's eyes, it was not uh, <laughs> because he liked me so much, because... But he liked the idea so much. Yeah, he said, this is really a great idea, and uh, you have to further develop it. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, it can be a fantastic machine. Um, so I said to them, well, of course, we, uh, we would like to do that, but first we want to know what this approximately is going to cost. Yeah, because then we can make the trade-off, we can see whether this machine is economically also viable. It can be a good idea, but in the end, the money is, of course, very important. So, Wim said, well, we're going to make a proposal for you uh, for a feasibility study that you can see how much it's going to cost us approximately and uh, we'll come back to you. So, in about a few weeks, I called Wim and said, well, Wim, what's the status of this, uh, this quotation? He said, Martin, you're not on top of our priority list, but it's coming, I can tell you. And he kept his promise. In a couple of weeks, we got a quotation and I fell off my chair. <laughs> no, it was a... It was a good quotation, and that was actually uh, also the moment that we could think, well, we can go ahead, or we can go ahead, uh, we know what it's going to cost approximately. Months later, um, JP sat in my office and he said, well, Martin, you're not going to believe this. I said, why not? He said, well, we got called by the banks, and two investors are interested in the barge master. One is so-and-so, and the other one is Franz von Zemmel. Franz von Zemmel, he's on top of our list. Yeah, he's the number one in offshore lifting. He did the salvage of the course, 
he can, well, he is the man for a bar semester. And he's got a lot of money. And that's all we <laughs> Now, Franz, you're here as well, of course. <laughs> We're very happy that you're here because um, you really inspire us. Your entrepreneurship is, is really fantastic. Um, I think your power is that you can see at a glance or within a few minutes what is a good idea and what you want to invest in, yeah? where you want to invest in. And it's uh, really great to have you here. He's the entrepreneur of 2011. Yeah, he received the prize from Ernst Young, and um, I would like to invite him here to the stage because he's going to tell something about what drives him, what makes him tick, what did he do after uh, he left Mammut as a CEO. Uh, here is Frans van Zeulen. Thank you, uh, Martin. Yes, uh, before I go a little bit further about the Bart Master, I want to tell you a, a short story. Um, I was for 35 years, I was CEO of Mammut. And uh, when I was 55 years old, that was in 2005, I thought I don't want to work anymore. And I stopped working. I worked from my uh, 20s. Till, the, till my 55 year age and then I uh, took over the responsibility to my uh, younger family members and I went away. I took uh, uh, my wife on a very big hiking trip from, uh, from uh, Utrecht to Athens and then in the winter we stayed uh, on an island in Greece and then we uh, uh, went to, uh, to Alicante and we walked back again. And as soon as I passed the Pyrenees, I started to get nervous. I thought, what will happen now? I'm nearly at home. And, <laughs> and what should I do then when I come home? So I thought, uh, what are your strong points, what are your weak points, I have a lot of weak points, but some strong points uh, are, are in my body, and one is that uh, I can do business, why, I don't know, because when I was young I never wanted to be a businessman, I always wanted to go further in, in sport, but my father said, to you, 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 you don't do that, you come and work for me. So. Uh, I really didn't want to be a businessman, but, but I was successful, so I thought, okay, I can do business. And I, a second point is I can motivate people, young people with good ideas. I can motivate them, and, uh, and, and I think I was a little bit in that direction. So when I was home uh, after this hiking trip, I, um, I think what I will do, I start to help young people with good ideas. Yeah? And I can invest some money in, in, in these companies and, and, and when, when it's going well and I can do some coaching, then we can be together successful. And we started uh, with Rolldock. That is a shipping company uh, with uh, heavy lift ships. And I must say, uh, uh, we have now uh, two ships sailing. We have on board uh, two, two new ships. And probably uh, after that, we will uh, again invest in two more ships. And we will have six ships. And they are doing very well. And one of the other companies uh, is, is, uh, is Warsmaster. Uh, as what uh, as I told you, uh, Via the Rabobank, they came, uh, they came to me and asked me, Franz, we have a good idea. We want to build uh, a barge master. And very soon I saw that this idea was a good idea, so I said, okay, I will help you. And we start the company. In the meantime, uh, there are uh, worldwide 43 companies now. In, the, in, in my, let's say, in my uh, Franz Verzeumel holding, uh, just we started uh, last year, uh, we started Raw Lift. 
Why we left? Because uh, uh, last summer my uh, family decided to left uh, Mammoet, and uh, yeah, uh, we have uh, in Roald Dog we have heavy lift ships. So I thought, okay, when you have to transport heavy lift pieces, uh, you must transport them also. When you transport them over sea, you must also transport them over land and install them. So it is, I put in Greek, a dramatic situation <laughs> that uh, I start again uh, a company like Mammut, uh, but that's life. Now I'm 62, so I also uh, uh, decided not to go in pension and uh, to work till, uh, <laughs> till I die. I die. <laughs> <laughs> that's it. Thank you very much for coming. Uh, I'm very happy with Bassmaster. Uh, I'm for sure that it is uh, it is a, a very good solution for do lifting and transport operations uh, uh, because we can use the Bassmaster, of course, also not only with a crane but also as 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 supplier to the offshore uh, uh, installation uh, drones. So uh, I'm 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 for sure that uh, it's a very good good system, and hopefully uh, we are. Uh, over five years, we are very, very happy with this new company. And GP, not forget GP, uh, that is the other partner. Uh, uh, we are with, uh, with uh, three uh, shareholders, uh, work nicely together. GP also a very great, great uh, financial. Uh, GP, perhaps you can uh, get also say some small words that the people know you. <laughs> I honestly uh, very much appreciate the, uh, the opportunity to say something, but Frans, actually, I was going to do that at the end. Oh, sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs>